Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Sunny Bray. I am the Business Development Coordinator here at Tourism Nova Scotia. Tourism Nova Scotia works with communities and industry to attract visitors to the province. Our work focuses on increasing tourism revenues through experience and sector development, business coaching, marketing, and visitor services. We are very excited uh, that you have joined us today for session two of the Build Your Business's Digital Marketing Strategy with the Digital Marketing Tree presented by SME Solutions. This is the second session of a three-part workshop. Session one occurred last week, and for those of you who missed the session, it was recorded, and that recording is available on our website, tourismnovascotia.ca, on the webinar series page. We encourage you to ask any questions that you may have throughout the session using the Q&A feature here on Zoom or entering them into the chat. Uh, we'll get to questions at the end of the session. And uh, just so you know, the session will be recorded and an email will be sent out after the presentation that will include a link to today's recording. Uh, so if you'd like to watch it again or share with any of your colleagues, uh, we'd invite you to do so. And that email will also uh, share out any links or resources that our presenter shares with us today. This webinar is offered in partnership between Tourism Nova Scotia and Digital Nova Scotia through Digiport, a one-stop shop of interactive services and educational opportunities to help tourism businesses develop digital marketing skills and access professional support to improve their online presence. It's free to sign up, uh, so you can go to NS digiport.ca and here you can watch recordings of our past webinars covering topics such as uh, digital and social media marketing, website development, SEO and analytics, content development, business planning, booking engines uh, and branding just to name a few. Uh, you can also sign up for a free one-on-one -on -one consult with any of our digital experts and access resources to improve your digital presence. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our presenter today, Liam Taylor from SME Solutions. Uh, Liam is a dedicated professional with over 25 years of experience managing all facets of emerging and, ex and existing business concepts. He specializes in the development of new business ideas from concept to execution. And he has a demonstrated history of working in the innovative agriculture industry. And uh, on a side note, I just found out that Liam uh, has presented sort of um, uh, on uh, Dragon's Den and uh, Dr. Oz uh, with part of his work with the agriculture industry. Uh, he's uh, skilled in search engine optimization, business planning, e-commerce, entrepreneurship, and strategic planning. So uh, without further ado, Liam, I'd like you to uh, invite you to share your screen and, and uh, start the presentation. Thank you very much. And you should be able to see the uh, beautiful Lunenburg waterfront right now. Okay, so welcome to uh, Digital Nova Scotia workshop in collaboration with Tourism Nova Scotia. This is the, the second of a three part series, which will be looking at creating your tourism businesses digital strategy using the metaphor of what is known as the digital marketing tree. I'm Liam Taylor. I'm a business evaluator at SME Business Solutions. Um, we did review my experience last session, so I won't bore you with that again. Uh, but most recently, my focus has been on helping my clients optimize their websites and create strategies to optimize their online marketing spend. Today's session is the second session on the digital marketing tree, also known as the internet marketing tree. For those of you who weren't able to join us last week, it was developed in 2009 by Mike Robinson and updated in 2015, but it's as relevant now as it was then. I love the metaphor of the tree and the structure it gives to the organization, not only for your digital marketing, but also for your business as a whole. <clears throat> the tree has three key sections, the roots, the trunk, and the branches. The roots represent the background of your business. The trunk is your website, and just like a real tree that reaches out towards the sun, so your marketing branches reach out towards your clients. Your leaves, or rather your marketing efforts, drop every year at the end of the season and nourish your tourism roots, giving you valuable feedback to allow you to reevaluate your marketing efforts for the next year. In the last session, we reviewed the first two roots of your business and came away with a research route, ultimately the four Ps of your marketing mix, the, your, what your product is, your price, your place, and your people, who your target demographic is. 
we went, we then visited our strategy, which is ultimately the buyer's journey in tourism, dreaming, planning, booking, experiencing, and sharing all the stages of your client's uh, experience with you. In this session, we'll be finalizing the last routes, branding and content, and then reviewing those elements in the context of creating our web presence or the trunk of your business. The development and the design of your website. So having completed the first two routes, research and strategy, we move on to branding. Now don't be fooled into thinking that branding is all about your logo, the colors of your website, etc. It's so much more than that. And we're gonna delve into what that means for your tourism business. One description I particularly like is, a brand is more than just a cool logo and some fancy images. It's the identity of your business. So think about your, your business identity, what your business is as if it were a person. So what image, identity, experience do you want your customer to conjure up in their mind when they think of your business? Let's look at some examples. So here are some logos of travel companies. How about Sunwing? Look at the bright orange logo with the cute kids drawing of the sun. Let's see what sort of, what does that conjure up in your mind? Let's have a look at their website. Cheap, cheerful. Look at those smiles. Everybody is smiling, having fun. It's focus on adventurous, young, beautiful people in Caribbean getaways. Let's, uh, let's now compare that to another business. Let's take Air Canada. Nice, crisp, clean logo, black and red, very somber the maple leaf, the symbol of Canada and something to be proud of. And let's look at their website. Okay, it looks high-end, international. This is not people having fun. This is for serious travel aficionados. Blue, black fonts, no visible faces. It's possibly even solemn. Two very different examples of personalities of businesses. So how do you create, create a branding strategy like Sunwing and Air Canada, and why is it important? It's not just the logos and colors of your business. It can encompass the name, the visual identity, the tone of voice, and experiences of your tourism business. And branding has powerful benefits, such as building recognition and familiarity for your business, helping your target audience to establish trust in your business, encouraging guests to look to find and rebook with you again, and empowering you to scale and uh, expand your business to other locations and markets. So where do you begin as you're developing a robust, memorable brand in tourism? Here are my steps to ensuring you create a memorable brand. Ensure you know your target market inside and out. Now we reviewed this uh, under the research element and we'll come back to it again and again. Uh, you've got to know your target demographic inside and out. Ensure you're positioning yourself correctly in relation to your competition. Understand your value proposition to your specific demographic. And always create clear, compelling, consistent communication. And we'll review these different steps now. Now, starting with target demographic, uh, this is only one slide, as you will already have identified this, uh, your buyer persona in the research route last week. If you weren't here last week, I would recommend looking into this as your target demographic is key to keeping all your marketing relevant and effective. Now you have to make sure that what you're offering to them makes you stand out from your competition. So you know your customer and understand their needs. You know what to do, but what about the other businesses within your marketplace? Positioning is all about where you are compared to your competition. You're probably already thinking about who do you look at when you think about competition in your local area? Market positioning is a market strategy focused on building a unique identity that differentiates you from your competitors to your customers. Bear in mind, this is all relevant to your customers. The goal of a marketing position strategy is to make your clients view your business distinctly and clearly communicate what your competitive advantage is. Now, you should create a matrix around key aspects important to your clients and evaluate where you sit in relation to your competition. The simplest of these, obviously, is what we have on the screen here, quality and price. But it's business dependent. Identifying what matrices you should use is straightforward, um, but make it relevant to your uh, clients. So there are easy steps to figure this out. 
Using the buyer personas you've already identified last week, outline what their specific needs are in relation to your business. You identify what makes your product or service fulfill that need. Then identify what differentiates you from your competition. And you can create a matrix around that to, uh, just to figure out where you sit in relation to your to competing businesses. So now we understand our target market and our customer demographic. You understand where you sit in relation to your comp competitors concerning important elements of the business. Now you need to build your value proposition. You can use uh, what we did just then in the, um, in the positioning element but your business's value proposition is one of the most important elements of your overall marketing message. It answers the question, why should your ideal cu customer purchase from you rather than someone else? It's a basic marketing concept in which you define what makes your product or service unique and valuable to your target market. It tells potential customers why they should do business with you rather than with your competitors. And a good unique value proposition describes those elements outlined in the previous section the benefits of your product, whose need your product meets, the target market for your proposition, and what makes you or your product different and unique uh, from the competition. If you can answer this in one catchy sentence, you have a strong and unique value proposition. But there are some simple steps that you can follow to reach this. So the first one, for a tourism business, why should your ideal customer purchase from you rather than someone else? Think about what they're looking for. The first thing is to list the physical features and factors of your destination. All you have to do is think about climate, geography, services, uh, landmarks, topographical features, and infrastructure. What are you close to? Identify those aspects that are unique to your product or service. So when you've listed the physical features and factors of your destination, you need to identify which of those are unique to you, to your business. This is what sets you apart from your competitors. Then narrow this, narrow down your product or your service, depending on, on what you do. And after identifying the unique features and benefits, you need to narrow it down. Take your list of unique features and put an asterisk next to anything that your competitors cannot easily duplicate or reproduce. You should specialize. Do not offer everything, but choose the products that will, you feel will be really successful. Remember the old phrase, jack of all trades, master of none. Make sure that you stand out as doing one thing really well. Then you can start writing phrases. Create phrases around your unique product or service that answer the question, why should your ideal customer purchase from you rather than from somebody else? Keep them short, clear, and concise. Just put down some ideas. And really think about answering your customer's private, primary question, which is what's in it for me? A good unique value proposition makes the benefits of your products and services crystal clear from the outset. It needs to be to the point and phrased as a benefit to your customer. They need to know why they should buy from you rather than someone else. So you follow those steps and you'll come up with your unique value proposition. So we have our target market. We have our positioning in relation to our competition. We've identified our value proposition. Now we have to be able to communicate everything we've created so far to our potential customers. Communication, you need to use clear and engaging language, images, and design elements to convey your value proposition on your website, social media, brochures, or other marketing channels. You can use testimonials, reviews, or case studies to showcase your value proposition and build trust and credibility with your cons consumers, customers. Just make sure that the unique value proposition you've defined is communicated in what I call the three C's. And yes, us marketers, we love our abbreviations. Make your communication compelling, clear, and consistent. As we'll mention in the next section, every communication will need to compel your client towards a goal. Always communicate with an action in mind. So let's have a quick look at Sunwing's uh, website again in relation to uh, their target market positioning, value proposition, and communication. So their target market, I think it's fairly clearly here, young, adventurous, fun-loving, and uh, apparently good-looking. 
uh, their positioning. It's a bit tricky to see from just a glimpse on their website, but they are more on the low, low price, medium quality compared to their competitors. Their value proposition. So what makes them stand out from their competition? Why should their customers buy from them instead of another company? So if we look down at the bottom here, you've got, they've got do more, explore more, celebrate more. More than who? That is what they are offering. Their, their value proposition is they offer more. Consistent communication, more, more, more. Um, which also, <laughs> which brings us straight on to communication. Remember, compelling, clear, and concise, consistent. Is it compelling? Well, let's have a look at the descriptions down here. Um, Bijou Beach Resort, a boutique retreat with a twist. A twist, interesting. It intrigues you. Your new fave Cuban locale. Why? You know, why, why is it going to be my new favorite? And Cancun, we dare you not to love this hotspot. Feels like a bit of clickbaiting there, but it's a challenge. Okay, why, why am I, uh, why am I not going to, why am I going to love this hotspot? So it's definitely compelling. Clear, nicely organized, I would say yes. And consistent, yes, absolutely. It's all about adventure, discovery, and young, beautiful people. So now it's time to create your logo and your color scheme. Now you've identified those four elements of branding, you'll probably already have an idea or an image in, in mind of what you want to create. So have some fun, think about your unique value proposition, your unique elements to your business, what you want to convey to your clients, where you position yourself and clear, clean communication and you'll come up with your own logo and branding. Having completed research, strategy, and branding, we now move on to content. Content is king and distribution is queen. That was Jonah Parezzi of, of BuzzFeed. And every marketing strategy needs content. Every effective piece of content has three elements, the benefits, credibility, and a call to action. For each blog post, Instagram feed, and TikTok, you need to identify why you're posting. Don't just post for the sake of posting. You want to get something out of this. You want a call to action. Why are you posting this? You need to show a benefit to the people who are viewing it. Who thinks this is a great product? Credibility. And then encourage your viewers or your potential clients to take an action. Identifying the benefits of your location is easy once you've already completed the, the steps to identify your unique value proposition. We're going to go back to target market, unique value proposition, all those elements as we develop your digital marketing strategy. Okay, so you've got your unique value proposition. You could tell anyone anything, but how do you give credibility to your content? Now, as a tourism uh, industry, Reviews are one of the most prolific and effective means of creating credibility. Sites such as TripAdvisor, Airbnb actively encourage people to display their five-star ratings. They send you a congratulations when you get a, uh, a five-star rating or a, a whatever, a positive review. But you can also ask your customers to send you feedback and ask for their permission to use this in promotional content. There are three reasons why customer reviews are important for your business. They can improve reputation and credibility. Customers' reviews um, increase social credibility, something you can share on uh, social media and leaves a positive impression on potential customers and provides transparency. I know whenever I'm online, I always look at the reviews. Customer reviews allow your customers to engage with your business. Now, engagement, this is one of the key elements that we'll be moving on to uh, with the branches of your digital strategy. You want to be able to engage, involve yourself, become emotionally attached to your clients and them to you. Having a place where customers can leave reviews is a positive way for customers to engage. They're interested in writing your review, want to feel connected, and want to share relevant information about their travel experience with you. And customer reviews help you improve your business. Customer reviews, constructive criticism, and they may include suggestions for ways to improve. There may be things that you haven't even thought about, but someone makes a point, gives you some constructive criticism, and you can improve your business. 
And then there's your call to action. We'll discuss some specific applications later on, but there's little point in creating contact without having a call to action in mind. In the movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross in a real estate office, Alec Baldwin says, always be closing, ABC. And actually HubSpot uh, has recently regenerated this and created ABH, always be helping. In the research section, in the first, first session, we identified a need that your business fulfills for your client. You're helping your clients to fulfill that need. There's nothing wrong with outlining that in your content and encouraging people to take the next step, which is to purchase the product. Let's review a couple of online examples of tourism companies who focused on their communication. So this is Discover, Discover Halifax. And remember, we're looking for benefits, credibility, and a call to action. So benefits. There's no better way to experience Halifax than by living like a local. It's a beautiful way of um, really getting people interested. They can tell what's in it for them. And in fact, there's their UVP. Experience Halifax like a local. Credibility. Ask a local. Call to action. Actually, it's the same thing. Ask a local. Click here. I actually, I, I toned down the slides because I had too many, but... They go into the individual who says Halifax's coffee scene. He writes an article or a blog on it. He's a local individual, and then they do a bio on him, which really adds a lot of credibility to the uh, to the information that they're providing. Now, Instagram, it's a beautiful way to demonstrate how to use content that has benefits, credibility, and a call to action. So look at this post from um, Visit Nova Scotia. So what is the call to action? Explore historic Yarmouth. The benefits, it's in, the, um, it's in the, uh, the text there. We love it for its sea captain's houses and its beautiful apple core style lighthouse at Cape Fushu. And credibility, well, that's done for you in the social media world. Look at all those hearts and positive comments. Everyone, yes, we were there, loved it this past June. Home of my beloved Victoria, may God protect you. Not quite sure about that one. Um, but everyone does your feedback for you. So now we've created the completed the roots element of the presentation. And we're gonna move on to the trunk known as the design and development of your website. You'll most probably employ a designer or a developer to help you with this journey from concept to creation of your website, but having completed the roots of your business, the process will be much more straightforward for all involved. Given that your business is a tourism based, we'll assume the overarching goal of your website is to make a sale a reservation or a booking. Ultimately, web design determines the look and feel of a website, the, the element that's visible to the client, and the, the web development determines how it functions. So we're going to review these at a, a high level just so you understand um, what is involved in developing a website. The three areas of website development are the CMS slash web builder, and we'll, I'll explain what that is, um, the responsiveness of your website, and e-commerce. How are you going to make this website work for you? So the backbone of your website is the web builder or the content management system. Now, they're, they're actually different, but some people do use them interchangeably. Generally, web builders uh, are, or website building platforms are focused on the beginner and offer a, a drag and drop style visual editor that lets you manage and edit your, your site in real time. You can go into the back office, change things up, very straightforward. Whereas a content management system requires some coding knowledge in some cases. Uh, it's software that runs on a server and it allows you to create, store, search, and manage specific content. You've got control over virtually every element of your website. Whereas the web builders, you have some, uh, you've got some, some real limitations there. Depending on what you want to achieve through your website, they can be as complex or as basic as you need. So examples of website building platforms are Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, whereas CMSs, uh, content management systems, are WordPress, Joomla, and Magento. So that's a brief explanation of the web builder or CMS for your business. The next was responsiveness. Now, millennials and younger generations, in fact, even the older generations now, uh, they only use mobile devices to access the internet. A lot of people are moving away from desktops 
they, all they have is their tablet. So making your website compatible with all devices is essential. A responsive website ensures that your website works well on any device, computer, tablet, iPhone, uh, Android phone, so that everyone who visits your business gets the full experience. I actually worked with one business whose website was beautiful on a 27 inch screen, um, but completely incoherent on any other device. However, their managing director only ever looked at it on his web on his uh, computer, so he never realized this. And then this brings us to e-commerce. Now, since the goal of a tourism website is to make a sale or a booking, there are various ways of monetizing your website, and there are a slew of options depending on what you offer. For restaurants, Open Table, it's a software that allows reservations. Triton for tours and activities. For hotels, there are thousands. There's ResNexus, ResBook, Hotel Runner, um, and Wix, which works with Hotel Runner, um, to name but a few of the options out there. Some of these channel managers integrate with a CMS. Uh, you can have a plugin that you use. Um, and even web builders, like I said, like Wix, a web builder incorporates um, Hotel Runner within your website, but they can be quite restrictive. Uh, some of these, in fact, I believe ResNexus actually builds your website for you so that they take it off your hands completely. Uh, but again, there are some serious limitations. So those are the three elements that I feel are important to a tourism website. CMS Web Builder, responsiveness, and the e-commerce element. So moving on to web design. We have content and copywriting, usability, visual design and layout, and branding and message. You've got 15 seconds to capture the interest of your customer online. If they don't get the information they want in that time, they're likely to go elsewhere. And to this end, there are four fundamental elements of web design. Each, as each is essential to the overall user experience and has to be considered when creating your web design. Content and copywriting, visual design and layout, usability, and branding and message. So the first of these is content and copywriting. Content is king. There's no denying it. Uh, it's one of the primary reasons people visit your website and plays a significant role in search engine opt optimization as well. You've got to make sure that your content of your website is relevant to your business. Google will figure that out. To make your tourism website as appropriate as possible to, consume, to your customers, you should invest in high quality and relevant content formatted for your site, including videos, news, and high quality images. Good web copywriting is essential to successful online presence. It clearly communicates the business's goal, it makes a good impression, it aids in search engine optimization, and it drives the customer towards a goal. Always try and include that call to action. People will be more likely to book or buy if they can find the information they're looking for quickly. And 15 seconds isn't long. Now there is a difference between content writing and copywriting. And here we've got some examples. Ultimately, content is primary, primarily based on informing the reader, whereas copywriting is more concerned with engage, engaging the reader. And that's really where you want to be as a tourism uh, website. Now, copywriting, landing pages with calls to action, emails that encourage your customers to visit your website, your website copy, obviously, uh, ads, ad writing, and slogans and taglines, all based on your unique value proposition. Content writing is, is more to inform. So this may be a way of getting people to your website. You might want to do an article on, I don't know, I'm, I'm down in Lunenburg, so an article on the Blue Nose. So you can advertise that, but your article is more to inform your readers. Email newsletters, ones that aren't trying to draw people towards a goal, Again, more information. It's more about keeping in contact with your clients rather than engaging them and pushing them towards a, a goal. 
infographics as we've got here this is an infographic nice quick easy to distill information um, ebooks white papers and case studies not so relevant to the tourism industry but certainly could be interesting uh, a white paper on um, tourism in nova scotia for example then we have the visual design and layout of your business. Now, as we've mentioned, having a visually impressive website compatible across all platforms and devices is crucial. Uh, it's the design of your website is the first thing that potential clients notice. And a well-designed website not only increases brand recognition, but increases credibility and ultimately leads to more sales. The less maintained, the less professional your website looks, the less probable it is that those individuals will be booking with you. What you see here on the screen at the moment are examples of wireframes outlining the, the basic layout of different page styles. And when you create a website, uh, web builders like Wix, for example, like Squarespace, they will create these wireframes for you. And I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen some websites that employ this. On the left-hand side, we've got uh, a menu at the top with a logo, a header image, and then three buttons below that. On the right-hand side, that seems to be a, a pricing matrix where you've got the low price, the starter pack, the one that most people buy, and then which is increased in size, encouraging you to take that action, and then the other two, which are uh, the other purchase options. On to usability, or UX, as they use in the, in the trade. They say that great usability is never noticed by the end user, but bad usability is immediately noticeable. Most people want to move quickly through a website. You've got that 15 second gap. So understanding what information they're looking for is key to designing a site that makes it simple for them to do what they want. Many websites are cluttered with irrelevant information, advertisements, <clears throat> links to other websites and so on. A great website should have a navigation menu that is well-defined, simple to understand and use, and provides users with a clear path to the information they require. You also need to ensure that your site meets certain standards, such as accessibility. There are now ADA compliance requirements for websites. Most web builders, Wix, Squarespace, they already uh, have that compatibility all built in, um, but others may not. And branding and message. We'll come back to um, branding and message. You need to make sure that your website accurately reflects your company's brand, message, and personality. Potential clients need to be able to see what your company is all about in an instant, just like Sunwing, Sunwing does here. You need to make sure you focus on in on your target market and your buyer persona, which you've created in your research element of your, uh, your roots of your digital marketing tree, your positioning in relation to your competition, your value proposition, and ensure your communication is always compelling, clear, and consistent. You can see here in, on Sunwing, they use the, the rule of three. Do more, explore more, celebrate more. People tend to remember um, the, the rule of three, uh, blood, toil, tears. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones now. Um, the Bible is a famous one, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Um, so try and make sure that you have three key points to come across in, in your communication. So to review what we've covered so far in these two sessions, we've reviewed the roots of your business and we've come, up, come away with research, the four Ps of your marketing mix, your product, what your core product is, your price, what price point you're gonna be selling your product at, place, the location for your product or service, which in the case of fixed accommodation and restaurants, Obviously, uh, something to bear in mind when you're starting up, but once you have that, um, your place is rather fixed, more so for tour companies and for 
um, mobile food trucks, things like that. People, who your target demographic is and creating your buyer persona. Now, this is key across the board. You have to understand who your target market is and you may have more than one. We covered, uh, in the first session, we covered a couple of individuals, but we recommend that there are three buyer personas that you create. Give them names. Talk about their, their likes, their dislikes, what they're hoping to get out of your their visit to you, and really understand what their drivers are, what their need is, and how you fulfill that need. Strategy. We then understood the buyer's journey in tourism. Now, in traditional marketing, you have four different elements, attract, convert, close, and loyalty. So you're, first, you have to attract the attention of your target market. You convert them by engaging with them. You close, meaning that you they become a client of yours. They actually make a purchase. They actually come and visit. And then loyalty, which is when they, uh, they become an ambassador for your business. Now in uh, tourism, it's slightly different. It's dreaming, the, sorry, the, the customer buyer's journey is dreaming, planning, booking, experiencing, and sharing. Dreaming is the time when they are, they're thinking about going on holiday, thinking about what to do. They're thinking about where they wanna go, but they've got nothing concrete in, in mind. That's when, you're, that's when you really want to attract your customer. The planning. This is when you're converting, you're engaging with them. You're trying, you're convincing them to, to come and visit Nova Scotia. The booking, obviously, this is where you close. This is where you are trying to make, get them to use their e-commerce system, your online travel agency. You're converting them to make a purchase. Uh, the experiencing, not strictly speaking a digital element, but this is where you really begin to build trust with your customer. They're experiencing. You want to be as, um, as helpful as possible. You want them to come away with an experience that is second to none so that they then move on to part five, which is sharing. And this is the loyalty area of your buyer's journey in tourism. You want them to share social media, reviews, reviews, reviews. Get those five stars and use that to create your credibility. Branding. We've identified where we position our business compared to our competition. It's very important to try and identify what makes you different from your competition. The value proposition, what it is that you do that why your customer should come, come to you instead of going to your com uh, competitors. Communication, three Cs, make it clear, concise, and consistent across all your communication, your website, your emails, your branding, your brochures, if you print brochures. Um, for content, we've identified what creates valuable content by ensuring we include a benefit, a credibility, and a call to action. So remember that, remember the Instagram example, a call to action, come to historic Yarmouth, credibility, um, sorry, benefits. We love it for its the, the lighthouse. We love it for the beaches. And then credibility. You have to give your business credibility through reviews, comments on social media, on your website. You get a five-star review, put it up there. It gives you credibility. We've reviewed the trunk of your business. And we now understand a little more about web development. Remember, this is the area of the website that the customer does not see. What a CMS or a web builder is and the difference between the two. The importance of building a website that can be viewed on all devices or responsiveness. And the need for software to facilitate booking online. People want to book online. They don't even want to talk to people anymore. It's much easier to go online and book a flight, book a restaurant, um, book their accommodation, than talking to someone. Now, there are, there are companies, there's one company that's actually used the fact that they don't offer online booking as a marketing ploy. Um, it's up in Cape Breton, and I forget the name of it now, but all their social media is based around the fact that they do not use online booking. They want you to call them. 
And so they've used that as a bit of a differentiating factor. It's, a, it's quite a good marketing ploy, but uh, they're a very unique uh, location. Then we moved on to web design. The, imp the importance of content writing versus copywriting, the visual layout and the wireframes, how to make your, your web pages look clear, uh, the usability. So people need to be able to find what they want in 15 seconds on your website. They need to be attracted in 15 seconds. And the incorporation of the three C's of communication for your branding. Clear, concise, consistent. The nice rules of three. So then the next session, we'll be focusing on the branches of digital marketing and using all the assets we've created in the, uh, the roots and the trunk of your business. And we'll be looking at search engine marketing, directory listings, social media, email marketing, public relations, and then advertising and traditional marketing. There is still a need for traditional marketing. Um, so we'll be looking at that in the next session. Actually, this presentation, it's only quarter to 10. So I'm happy to answer any questions that might be on the chat now. Yes, Liam, great. Thank you so much. Um, so many great points and lots of fantastic information shared there. Uh, we do have a, a couple of questions and a comment here in the chat and uh, I'll encourage, encourage everyone else to pop your questions in now uh, for Liam while we have him. Um, we have a comment here from Sheila. Um, Sheila says, for boat tours, tour top seat reservations worked great for us this summer, our first online one. Great. Absolutely. That's good to hear. And it's it. I, I wonder for Sheila what her target market is and why that worked so well for you. Um, I'm just having a look. Tour top seat reservations. I had not heard of that one, but that's a good one to um, to bear in mind. I'm just looking up for your uh, boat tour, Sheila. Sheila, I don't know oh, if you're still are. with us. Yep, in Brad Hall. Yep, Bird uh, Island Boats, Tours and Cottages. If you're still with and us. And Sheila asked about ha planning with social media content before the summer comes. Um, when you're thinking about the social media planning for the coming year, then we'll be discussing in the next session the, uh, the customer's buying journey and what to advertise based on each element of the dreaming planning, booking, experiencing, and uh, and then being an advocate, the sharing. So let's say in the, in the middle of winter, when it's miserable here, people are going to be thinking about, okay, what do I, what do I want to do next summer? I want to get away. So we have to bear, bear in mind that all your posts and social media um, should be based around that. Um, then in the spring, they're more looking at planning and booking. So you're encouraging people to take the next step. But we'll we'll discuss that a little more when it comes to uh, the marketing and the branches. And Sheila just uh, followed up. She yeah. said her target market are couples aged 30 to 70, uh, primarily in Ontario and Quebec. And uh, adventurers and explorers are their sort of target. Yeah, audience. that is that is a great uh, that's a, a great demographic to hit. I would suggest breaking that up even more, create uh, three buyer personas from your experience with your with your customers and, and really see if we can figure out a strategy to focus in on each one of those. Um, so couples age 30 to 70, I would break that down into, yeah, couples age 30 to 40, 40 to 50, and then 50 to 70. Um, adventurers, great. Okay, and then we have uh, a couple of questions here in the chat. Um, Zach asks, hi there, when you have a moment, can you discuss boosting your SEO? Yeah, see, SEO is going to be discussed in, in more depth at the next, um, in, in the next session, but bear in mind that your SEO, and there are a few elements that you need to do prior to even thinking about your SEO. 
Now, Zach, I don't know what your website is. I'm just looking for you. Um, lots of adventures. Okay, so the first thing I would suggest you do, even before next session, is to make sure your Google My Business um, listing is up to date. Make sure you've got a Google AdWords account. Uh, I would make sure that you have set, uh, set yourself up with Google Console, uh, which you may not find initially. And also make sure that you've got a Google Analytics account. Once you have all four of those, then you can really start looking into, uh, okay, let's see how can we improve what we've got on our website based on the information we've got from Google Analytics. And Zach, I don't know if you've, uh, if you have a chance, whether or not you've got that set up already, but certainly Google business listing, Google analytics, Google search console, and uh, a Google AdWords account. Okay. I see Zach's just said, I do have them set up, but just starting it now. That's not a problem. You can get a lot of data out in a fairly short period of time. Um, I'm going to, someone's asked me now to go back to the roots. There we go. Um, okay. And Joe, uh, Joanna Grimley has asked, uh, positioning recompetition is local 25 kilometers, Halifax, Nova Scotia, or Maritimes definition of local. Uh, I would suggest that your competition is more in line with, again, it comes back to your, your buyer persona. What is unique about your business? What is it that your business does, um, that other people, don't do it could be in nova scotia uh I, location dependent i always use i like uh, salty dog sea tours they do tours of oak island and i think they're the only company that do specific tours of oak island and so that is their unique value proposition um and they have very little competition with regards to boat tours because of that um for accommodation fixed roof accommodation Let's say people want to come down to, uh, Joe, I, I know that you're just outside of my home bay. So if you think about your local area as what brings your, um, your buyer persona, what brings your demographic to Nova Scotia? And I would suggest that in your case, it's going to be people who are coming to Chester, Lunenburg, Mahone Bay, that sort of area. So I would suggest that would be your uh, local competition. Evaluate what you do that's different compared to those in the Chester, Mahone Bay, Lunenburg area. Um, but it is very much dependent on what your users are getting out of you. What need are you fulfilling? Great. Um, Sheila also has another question here. Uh, she said a question about reviews. Which five star or maybe four star ones to promote or display? The nice thing about those is you can kind of pick and choose them. Now, when people look at reviews, there is some research which tends to suggest they look at the five-star ones and they look at the one-star ones. And two, three, and four kind of go by the, the wayside. So I would suggest if you want to promote a, uh, promote a review, I would be more concerned about choosing those which highlight what you see as your unique value proposition. Um, I have one client who has, I mean, his breakfasts, people rave about them. They don't stop going on about their breakfasts at the, at the bed and breakfast. And it's mentioned in almost every single review. So uh, he always, I, I suggest, look, push on the open door, make the most of saying that, you know, you offer the best breakfast, in Lunenburg and and he does and and people people rave about it and they come back again and again great okay I think that is uh mostly it here for questions I don't see anything else coming in uh one thing I would just like to add uh to Zach's question about SEO so Liam mentioned 
Uh, he's going to be covering a little bit of that in uh, session three. We do have um, some previous uh, recordings of uh, presentations on SEO available as well for you if you want to go in uh, this week, uh, you know, prior to, to joining us uh, for the third session next week, you can go into Digiport and um, do a quick search there for SEO webinars and uh, brush up on uh, some of the information there. Um, so that will be a, a good opportunity for you. So Liam, um, I think that's it. Did you have any more slides here to share before I, I take back over? No, I will be um, sending out a worksheet to help you take you through all these these different elements and allowing you to build your uh, your strategy, your online digital marketing strategy um, in the context of, of the tree. And uh, as I share my screen here, I would just again like to mention that, uh, if you can see that, um, that Liam is available uh, for one-on-one -on -one consultations through Digiport. Um, I encourage you all to take advantage of uh, those one-on-one -on -one consults. If you have some questions about your digital marketing strategy, your branding, uh, you know, maybe you need some help identifying your audience a little bit more, um, you know, look uh, to Digiport, look to book a session with Liam or any of our other um, digital experts available there. Uh, so thanks very much, Liam. Um, we'll see you next week. A pleasure. I look forward to seeing you next week. Great. All right. And so for our upcoming webinars, uh, we have our third and final session of the Digital Marketing Tree presented by Liam Taylor here from SME Solutions. Uh, that's next Thursday, October 26th at 10 o'clock a.m. So we'll see you all back then. Uh, in November, we have a session uh, called Aligning Vision and Values Throughout the Customer Journey, presented by Eva Gooch from STEM Consulting. Uh, so you can access um, uh, the registration at tourismns.ca slash webinar series, uh, or access uh, last week's session, um, or find links to Digiport, um, all on our website. Um, we do have a program that is uh, launched right now and accepting applications. The Voice of the Visitor Survey program helps tourism partners gain insights about visitors' perspectives on issues that are important to their business organization. Participants will work directly with our market research partner to craft questions, to get direct feedback from visitors that will help inform their planning. Um, it is uh, up to 10 questions for each partner can be included in an online survey administered by Tourism Nova Scotia and there's no cost to participate. So if that is of interest to you, I encourage you to apply. Uh, application deadline is Wednesday, October 25th at 20, uh, 2023. Um, and the link is there, tourismns.ca slash voice visitor survey program. So I just want to thank you all very much for tuning in today uh, for the second uh, session. Um, we encourage uh, feedback, questions, comments. Um, you can direct those at tnsbusiness at novascotia.ca. Um, you know, keep abreast of what's happening with Tourism Nova Scotia on our corporate website at tourismns.ca. And you can also check out uh, what we do for branding and advertising and marketing at uh, novascotia.com. And I would also encourage you, if you have a listing there, to maybe pop back in, uh, see if your listing, maybe have maybe you have some new photos or some new information to, to update. That would be fantastic. Um, as well, if you want to um, be in the know uh, for any new programs, programs or webinars that are being launched or any activities um, that Tourism Nova Scotia is engaged in, please register for our e-newsletter, TNS News and Resources. Um, as well, you can follow us on our corporate, I guess it's actually X now, not Twitter account, um, at twitter.com slash tourismns, or our corporate LinkedIn at www.linkedin.com forward slash company tourism nova scotia thank you very much uh, again we really appreciate you tuning in and we look forward to seeing you all next week have a great day